Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy platform. Delighted that you have clicked by. This is all about wonderful wine education. I take a topic, a country, a grape variety, whatever it may be, and give you the information that follows key text and key syllabus of major wine qualifications. So, just if you are an an enthusiastic amateur, or you are a bookworm studying the world of wine, you will find these videos very useful. This video is a video on the wines of Australia, which follows the diploma WSET Level 4. If you do have a comment or a question, perhaps you live in Australia, you've been to the places I'm talking about, or you like the wines, please do get in touch. So this is series two of a six series thriller on Australia. And we've got seven parts to this series. And this is the first one on Barossa. Now Barossa, Eden and Adelaide are all free content available on YouTube. The other four will only be available to those of you who subscribe to my e-learning platform. Let's rock and roll. Let's talk about South Australia first. Then I'll move into the Barossa zone. Then I'll move into Barossa Valley. South Australia. So this is the largest wine producing state by volume, producing approximately 50%, half of the total weight of harvested fruit. Now, much of the state of South Australia is too hot for viticulture. You'll see I've highlighted this on the map on the left hand side. So where the words actually are written of South Australia, this is much too hot, more desert-like and impossible for viticulture. So therefore, most of its viticulture, most of its vineyards are concentrated in the southeastern quadrant closer to the coast, basically where you see the groupings of all of those numbers. Now, yes, it's all grouped together, but Australia is a big place. So there's considerable diversity of climate, topography and geology between the wine regions. And the wines will range from light, fresh wines, such as something like a Riesling from Clare Valley uh, and also Sauvignon Blancs from Adelaide Hills to more concentrated expressions, potentially things like Cabernet, Sauvignon from Kunawara and other parts of the Limestone Coast. And of course, Shiraz from many parts, but specifically Barossa Valley and McLaren Vale. So big diversity. Now, the South Australia zone covers the whole vineyard area in the state and also forms a part of the Southeastern Australian zone, as we previously discussed at length in the previous series. Um, So that's really the large areas. Now we're going to a little bit smaller, the zones. There are eight smaller zones, of which the best, in terms of best well-known, are Barossa, Mount Lofty Ranges, the Limestone Coast area, and the Flurry, otherwise previously known as the Flurry Peninsula. But Uh, You'll see them here. Uh, So you'll see the Barossa zone is in purple on your map on the left. Mount Lofty Ranges, the collection in green. Flurry, which is that Flurry Peninsula and Kangaroo Island. Limestone Coast, but others are here too, like the Far North and the Lower Murray as well. The Lower Murray zone contains the Riverland region. And this hierarchy of zones give producers the option of blending grapes from different regions. Even some of Australia's most sought after, iconic and prestigious and most expensive wines, such as Penfolds Grange, will blend fruit from around the state and label it as the more generic South Australia. The picture you see in the background is a wonderful, dramatic backdrop of the limestone coast. It's that orange formation on your map at the bottom of South Australia. So we now go to the Barossa zone. 
This is to the north of Adelaide, and the Barossa Zone is one of Australia's most well-known wine-producing regions or areas. The Barossa Zone is split between two regions. So it is important we call this the Barossa Zone because it includes two regions. That is Barossa Valley, which is in kind of the dark and green in your left-hand side, so the westerly side of your map there, that covers mainly the flat valley floor, and then Eden Valley, which covers most of the hills to the east, noted there in red on your map. Black varieties dominate here. The vast majority of production is Shiraz. Now, this is a little bit more of a complex one. The table up here is for the Barossa Valley. But needless to say, Shiraz is the leading grape variety. Many producers blend Shiraz from both regions to combine the intensity and body of wines from the warmer Barossa sitting to the west, and then the elegance and higher acidity of Shiraz that comes from the Eden Valley to the east with that higher altitude, for example. So now the Barossa Valley. So I have now um, exited Eden Valley from the picture. So now the map on the left hand side is showing you the Barossa zone. Uh, in fact, the Barossa, sorry, valley and the green parts are all the vineyards we find here. There's 11,609 hectares in play. Very significant. It's one of Australia's largest wine regions and it sits about 60 kilometers to the north of Adelaide, inland from Adelaide. The Barossa Valley is a plain that is protected by low hills to the west and then on the east by the Eden Valley region and on the south by steeper steep parts of the Mount Lofty Ranges known as the Adelaide Hills that you see in the background of your picture just there. The climate here, so it's sheltered location due to these hills and um, Mount Lofty Ranges, for example, gives Barossa Valley a warm climate with hot, sunny days, but very importantly, cooler nights. Rainfall is relatively low during the growing season, typically about 210 millimeters per year. Now, I've actually given you some climatic data here, who is from the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia. And you'll see that between the time period of 1961 and 1990, the rainfall, the GSR rainfall, growing season rainfall, is 213 millimetres. And this has only slightly decreased uh, in the last 30 years, where it's about 211 the elevation, uh, sorry, the um, mean temperatures, though, have increased by 1.1 degrees C uh, from those two time periods. So it's definitely getting warmer, but the rainfall is staying pretty similar. Now, the issue is the growing season rainfall is quite low. So irrigation is quite necessary in most, uh, most years, but disease pressure will be quite low. The map on the left hand side shows you the average annual rainfall. Now, annual rainfall is about five, between 530 to 560 millimeters uh, per year. That's dropped a little bit, with rainfall being concentrated in the hills that just go into the Eden Valley area. See, that's the kind of blue to green area. Most of the plain, however, of Barossa Valley here in this kind of yellow and orange, therefore has very low rainfall in comparison. The topography of this location, so most vineyards will lie on that plain between about 250 and 370 meters, okay? So you see there is a topographical cross section to the top right, uh, and you'll see around Greenock, and then going towards uh, Tanunda, that area there sits at about 250, 260, up to about sort of 350. That's where most of our vineyards are found. When you then go more towards the east of Tanunda, you head towards the Eden Valley, 
And of course, your altitude starts to increase at that point quite significantly. So if grapes are grown on the floor, so in between Greenup, you'll see here, and Tanunda, for example, locating places like Sepelsfield, Gomorrah, Mopa, um, Ebenezer, if they are grown in these areas, then expect very full-bodied style wines. But the vineyards that are found on the valleys on either side, specifically the Eden side, will produce more fresh expressions, often with higher levels of rotundone, that kind of peppery character in the Shiraz. Many producers will blend between cold and warm sites to get the balance that they desire. Geology is what we'll look at next. There really is a complex variety of soils. Producers, it's certainly in the last 10, 15 years with the research that has happened, have started to exploit the differences found here. The complex system of valleys and twisting hills results in a variety of slopes, aspects and sites. The soils do vary widely, but fall in a family of relatively low fertility clay loams through to more sandy soils, ranging from greyish to brownish to red. As in much of southeastern Australia, acidity will increase in the subsoils, so this restricts root growth and vigour. In the northern part of the valley, there is an iron stone layer which is fairly well prized for its water retaining properties. It's actually in this picture in kind of like a light blue colour uh, and you will find going into sort of reddish colours as well. Some of Barossa's most age-worthy expressions will come from that geology. The grape growing. So vines were first planted in the Barossa Valley in the 1840s and due to the lack of the lousy louse, phylloxera, the valley is home to some of the world's oldest vines, most notably Shiraz and Grenache. These low yielding dry farmed bush vines produce some beautiful, outstanding and complex wines. In 2009, they wanted to respect legally these older vines more and the Barossa Old Vine Charter was established to record, preserve and promote these old vines and create uh, a number of categories linked to vine age. We are increasingly now finding these as well on the label. So if it is a 35 year old or older, it will say Barossa Old Vine. If it's 35 to 70, oh sorry, if it's beyond 70, it is a Barossa Survivor Vine. If it's beyond 100, it's a Barossa Centenarian Vine. And if it's beyond 125, it's a Barossa Ancestor vine. Some of the old vines were lost, however, due to the vine pool scheme introduced into South Australia in the 1980s, which was designed to curb overproduction. Um, now, a little bit on the Ancestor vines, because these are the oldest, and I heard a list of them here that are listed. These are an example of some of them. I won't read all of them out. You'll see a couple that you might recognize, like Henschke Hill of Grace, uh, things like the um, Langmail Freedom, 1843. So these are phenomenal wines. And of course, uh, the genetic material of these vines have been used to pretty much propagate most of uh, the region. So some very old vines in play there. What about our key grape varieties here? So Barossa's signature grape variety, of course, is Shiraz, accounting for about 68% of the tons crushed in 2023. Typically, it's full-bodied, high in alcohol, with high levels of soft, smooth tannins and pronounced ripe or sometimes cooked and dried black fruit aromas. You'll typically find licorice as well. Many are aged in American oak, although more recently, many winemakers have been moving to French oak. 
Some producers have started harvesting earlier to produce more fresher, elegant styles and certainly locating fruit from higher altitude. Both styles, be it more concentrated or more leaner, can age for a long time. They often soften and they develop spicier, leathery aromas over the bottle age. The second most planted grape variety is Cabernet Sauvignon. Now this does better in slightly cooler, higher sites, but the style here is still fairly rich and ripe, uh, often considered more uh, denser than you'll find in somewhere like Kunuara or Margaret River. There's also important plantings of Grenache, both in the old and new vine format. It's widely used as standalone, single varietal, but also in Rhone style blends, typically GSMs, MSGs, uh, SGMs, whatever you want to say. Other great varieties, um, we're talking about whites here. Whites make up only 9% of the tons crushed. There are some high quality Chardonnay, which is a warm climate style, full bodied, riper tropical flavors. Um, but there is a movement towards more elegance, of course. The Barossa Valley is also very well known for its distinctive style of Semillon. I mentioned this actually in the previous series with higher alcohols, lower acids, and more body and quicker development than those from Hunter Valley. Premium white wines have tended to be fermented and aged in French oak, although there has been an increase towards lighter expressions. Okay, well, that brings me to the end of part one, looking at the Barossa Valley. Please do join me for the next three video on the Eden Valley. If you do have a comment or a question, please do get in touch. You can do so by commenting on this video below. Perhaps you have been to Barossa, you like Barossa. Who are your favorite producers, for example? Please do get in touch. But I've been Jimmy Smith, so thank you very much. And until next time, ciao for now. Thank you.